Explain the procedure to the patient and gain consent. Clean your trolley with alcohol base wipes from top to bottom and allowing the surfaces to dry. And now wash your hands. Put on your apron and open your pack onto your clean surface. Your pack may contain everything that you need inside. Once you have opened your pack, rearrange all your equipment on your sterile surface. Prepare your patient for the procedure. Get them into the preferred position, which will be flat on their back. Bring their knees up, heels together and relax the legs out to the sides. Alternatively, if your patient is obese or they have problems with their joints, they can roll onto their side and lift their leg up slightly. Now put on your sterile gloves. Cover the patient's thighs and buttocks with a sterile paper towel. And to obtain good vis visualisation of the urethral opening, it may be helpful to place a pillow under the small of the patient's back or ask, ask if they can put their hands underneath their buttocks to lift their pelvis. Now separate the labia minora using a swab in order to view the urethral meatus. Select the cleaning agent according to local policy and clean the labia and urethral meatus with downward strokes using single swabs. This will lower the risk of contaminating the urethral meatus with bowel flora. Dispose of your gloves, wash and dry your hands and put on a new sterile pair of gloves. Now take your lubricating gel and gently insert the nozzle of the gel into the urethral meatus. And now unwrap your catheter. Tear along the perforated edge of the sterile inner package of the catheter and expose a few centimetres of the catheter. Keep the packaging on to protect the catheter and pull back the packaging as you insert. 
Hold the catheter in your dominant hand and gently feed into the urethral orifice. While angling the catheter slightly upwards and backwards, pass it into the bladder. Insert about five to six centimetres. If the patient complains of pain or there is any resistance to passing the catheter, stop and ask for medical advice. Continue to insert the catheter and discard the wrapper. When urine starts to flow out the catheter, insert the catheter by a few more centimetres. The purpose of waiting for urine to drain is to ensure that the catheter is in the bladder and not in the vagina or the bladder neck before inflating the balloon. Having confirmed by observation, slowly inflate the balloon with 10 mils of sterile water following the manufacturer's instructions. The patient should not feel any pain during inflation of the balloon. If she does, the balloon may be in the urethra. Stop and deflate. Once the balloon has been successfully inflated into the bladder, gently pull the catheter out until you meet some resistance. This allows you to check that the balloon is inflated in the bladder and is now in the correct position. Your catheter pack may come with a connecting device that will secure the catheter to the patient's leg or your catheter may go onto a catheter stand or secure to the patient's leg, minimising patient's discomfort. Plan the care of the catheter with the patient and note this in the care plan. Include the date of changing and removing the catheter. Make sure you document in the patient's notes record and date the type and the size of catheter, the amount of water in the balloon. Um, most catheter packaging comes with a sticky label bearing the necessary information. Note the amount of urine that is draining and the rate. Dispose of all your equipment into your clinical waste bag. Clean down your trolley. Remove your apron and your gloves. And wash your hands.